Sup guys, Vinci here with another informational video and I don't know why I always make informational videos more than anything else on YouTube but I just feel like a lot of the things that I talk about you guys have to know um, and this is very important. This is why I'm kind of putting my health on the line a little bit. I'm definitely feeling better from the pneumonia but this information has to get out as soon as possible because if you don't know what's going on with the government right now they f the ftc created a government policy known as COPPA, aka child online privacy protection act and you need to know this because this thing looks like it has the power to kill youtube channels in the blink of an eye and due to this threat there has been what I would like to call a the great social media migration. <sighs> yeah, tons of streamers that I know are moving to Twitch to prevent their communities from being lost due to these insane changes that's going to be applied to YouTube next year. And so, why are they leaving? I mean, I said leaving. Why are they leaving? Why should you follow me and others to Twitch? Well, I'm going to tell you. And it starts off like this. YouTube and Google, they're the ones to blame for COPPA slamming the brakes on content creators right now. It's pretty insane. Now, I will say this. Protecting the privacy of children is very important. Protecting their personal data. But the way COPPA is going about this this whole copper thing is just dreadful it's going to hurt a lot of people so before i talk about what youtube's plan is like we're gonna give you some background information about what copper is so let's talk about it in 1998 copper was put together to protect children's personal information basically copper's purpose is to make it illegal to take and use the personal information of children under the age of 13 for marketing and other malicious purposes. Children's information can only be given with parental permission. That's the key thing that you want to take from this here. Parental permission. What triggered this though? Because there is something you have to know about and that's web cookies. Because web cookie files is like that thing that is useful to us when using the internet. Because web cookies allows us to pull everything up much faster because that information is stored on our computers. And it just reduces time. We don't have to keep re-entering passwords and all that stuff. But there's a problem with web cookies. And so web cookie files is that thing that Kappa wanted to protect children from because the cookies contain browser history as well as personal information. And the major problem with cookies here is various websites as well as social media platforms can use this personal information found in cookies to send personalized ads to people. So how does this affect YouTube? The F TC does not want social media sites to access cookies of children without parental permission. And YouTube took advantage of these personalized ads. How did they do it? They did it by telling the FTC that COPPA does not apply to them because the content that YouTube provides are for people 13 and up. I have no idea why the FTC, the FTC actually took YouTube's word for it? Yikes. The FTC actually bought it. But here's the problem. Over the years, the analytical data showed that YouTube became a social media platform that kids under the age of 13 flocked to for entertainment. It even went as far as children being seen under the age of 13 actually being involved in video production. Big problem there. And furthermore, the number of young children 
grew so much. The number of children that was actually using YouTube grew so much that child advocacy groups of the FC, FTC filed a complaint. They said that YouTube was lying about upholding the policy of COMPA and the FTC even went as far as stating that the algorithm actually drew more kids in which can be proven through the use of personalized ads themselves. YouTube is at fault here. And to tell you the truth, Google had an even bigger role to play in this because Google now owns YouTube. We all know Google uses personalized data from people to promote ads and stuff like that through Google searches. Therefore, that personalized data that used by Google, that personalized data that Google loves so much, is also being used by YouTube. Take a look at recommended section. The recommended section that's been praised by YouTube now. That it automatically sends people to videos that are very similar to the previous videos that people clicked on. That can only happen through the use of personalized data because that personal data is being applied to YouTube's algorithm. It's all connected. So I feel like all of this was triggered due to the lies of YouTube. Not only that, Google's promoting this, promoting this and Google wants YouTube to do what they want because Google's now the boss. So, due to YouTube's deception, the FTC wanted $42,000 plus for every violation and YouTube can no longer be able to market the children under 13 years of age. But in order for YouTube to save themselves, they agreed to play ball with the FTC. They said that they will go ahead and pay a $170 million fine, stop the marketing to children under the age of 13, and give the FTC the power to sue content creators for about $42,000 for every video that doesn't comply to the policy set by them. So, if a content creator labels a video as not kid-friendly, and the FTC sees the video as kid-friendly, huge fines and other harsh consequences will apply. So now, what is YouTube's plan? What is their master plan? What are they going to allow content creators to do and not be able to do? So let's get into that right now. So YouTube plans to make content creators responsible for marking whether a video is kid-friendly or not. YouTube would be using an automated machine to help mark videos for you if you don't. But let's be real here. You don't want to trust YouTube to mark your videos. You definitely don't want to do that. Because you'll definitely get screwed over by that. I mean, people had filed so many complaints over the past two years about the automated system that YouTube has because it's severely flawed. So, um, let me go ahead and give you guys a clip from the COPPA video that YouTube made to prove all of this because the YouTube themselves even said that you can't trust YouTube's machine because it's not perfect. So how can you have any confidence in what YouTube is doing whatsoever? We're now required to ask you to mark all of your videos as made for kids or not. You know your videos and audience best. So we've launched a new audience setting that lets you tell us if your videos are made for kids or not. In addition to this setting, we'll use machine learning systems to help us find content that is clearly made for kids. But don't rely on our systems to set content for you. Like all automated systems, it's not perfect. If you don't set your audience, or if we detect error or abuse, we may set your audience for you. But in most cases, we'll rely on your audience setting to determine whether a video is made for kids. YouTube tells us that there are six ways to determine whether your video is kid-friendly. 
if children is the intended audience, if child actors or models are included, if there are cartoon characters, celebrities, or toys in the video, if the language is meant for kids, and I'm not going to lie, that is so vague. That is so, so, so vague. Um, activities that are meant for kids, that's also extremely vague. Because, I mean, it can be anything like sports, video games, certain kinds of stories, uh, projects. <sighs> the list goes on and on. Then you also have songs, stories, poems that appeal to kids. Those are the things that we have to use to determine whether the video is kid friendly or not. And so YouTube advises to see a lawyer to help you figure out if your video is kid friendly or not. But there's a problem with that. There was a video posted that went viral of a social media lawyer who made a video stating that even he doesn't know what counts as being kid friendly or not based on YouTube's vague checklist. Let me roll some beautiful bean footage of that clip so that you can see for yourself. How do creators know whether their video is a child video under the FTC rules or not? Well, YouTube does provide us with a handy dandy 10 factor analysis that us creators should do each time we wanna publish a video. Have you looked at the factors? They're right there in Title 16, Code of Federal Regulations, Section 312.2. I'm surprised you haven't seen them before. To determine whether or not your video is kid-directed, you as the creator must analyze, and I quote, the subject matter of the online service, the video's visual content, whether the video has animated characters or child-oriented tech activities, incentives, I don't know what that is, music or audio in the video, age of the models in the video, presence of child celebrities or celebrities who appeal to children, language or other characteristics of the online service, and whether the advertising on the online service is directed at children. Wow, at the end of the video, YouTube says you should consult a lawyer about whether or not your video is kid directed or not. Listen, I'm a social media lawyer. I've read through these factors multiple times. They're written actually by administrative officials and not legislators, and I can't even tell what they mean, let alone give advice to creators about whether or not they factor in favor of kids' content or not kids' content. Going through these factors leads me to the undeniable conclusion that YouTube failed to tell us, they did not disclose that these 10 factors are unworkable on a day-to-day -day basis. There is a lot of content that look like, that looks like it's child friendly, I mean kid friendly on the surface, but it's not always intended for children under the age of 13. For example, content on anime or cartoons that may look kid friendly, but they're not playing certain video games that could be judged as kid-friendly, but the language used is clearly not, saying a lot of crazy things that children shouldn't be hearing. So, due to the nature of the game, the video could still very well be kid-friendly to YouTube and the FTC because of the fact that the game is actually could be viewed as a game that appeals to children. There's like too many inconsistencies here with this system. It just seems like it's so easy to get screwed over with this whole thing. So let's talk about what happens if your videos are labeled as kid friendly. Oof. This is the scary part of this whole thing. You'll lose a lot of things that negatively impact the algorithm. The biggest thing about YouTube is creators on YouTube are slaves to the algorithm because if your channel doesn't get views, likes, dislikes, and interaction, then YouTube would less likely support your channel. So let's talk about some of the more important things that you will lose that can negatively impact your algorithm. Uh, the comment section that counts as engagement that's a big blow because engagement can help improve your traction on your channel 
the inability to monetize videos through use of ads. There are people out there that make a living off YouTube, so a lot of their revenue is going to be cut if a lot of their videos are viewed as child-friendly by YouTube or the FTC. Um, losing end cards, and end cards is that thing that you usually see at the end of the video uh, where it would um, provide a link and suggest previous videos. Losing the community tab, and the community tab is useful, it's like a YouTube version of Twitter, which is used to notify everyone all at once, like all the people that subscribe to your channel. And so losing that could be a problem because that's just another option to help keep your community in the know. And here's a major blow, even though the notification bell is... <coughs> I had to cough there, I cut that out. So back to what I was saying about the notification bell. No notification bell? That's huge! Because this would make it that much more difficult for viewers to get notified for every new post, every new video, every new stream. Oh boy, that's severe. And finally. If YouTube or the FTC accuses you of lying about videos and maybe even streams not being kid friendly, you would be fined for every video for marking it wrong. <sighs> That's a lot, a lot of pressure. And it's not like we have definitive answers to the question what makes our video what could make our videos or streams or what have you what would make those things kid friendly this is a very stressful time for content creators on youtube stressful time is this is massive it's madness actually so in short being labeled as kid friendly will severely halt the growth and progression of your channel by taking away all of the things that help improve the algorithm for your channel. No improvement in your channel's algorithm means that your channel will be ultimately killed. That's massive. That is a huge problem, especially if YouTube and the FTC doesn't clarify what all of this means because based on the information that everyone is collected right now the whole copper situation this is going to be a huge cop out for content creators so because of all of this staggering information many streamers and content creators are moving to twitch and other platforms to protect the existence of their communities so to ensure you do not lose me and your favorite content creators, join them on whatever platform that they're moving to. Whether it's Twitch, Mixer, whatever. Join me on Twitch. The link to my Twitch is in the description section below. And I hope to see you there. Act fast, guys, because we just don't know what's going to happen in the future. Look out for your favorite content creators, guys, because it looks like <clears throat> you could potentially lose them. Oh, I hate doing videos like this, but I wanted to make sure that those of you that are not in the know or you need more information or just wanted to hear it from me, the facts are spit from my mouth. Um, hopefully you don't get what I got through digital germs, but yeah <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day and be blessed people